Hey. I think everybody here knows so that we have to introduce myself. But um, I wanted to make a couple comments about the dog ordinance that you're thinking about passing. And that is, and I, one of them came up tonight when you mentioned having a kennel if you have more than four or five dogs. Most places, and this is even in big cities, when you have a kennel, there's no way to control the noise, okay? So basically, they're exempted from noise violations, okay? Which seems to be contrary to what you want to do. A lot of cities pass laws about the time of day after which you can't have noise violations. Usually it's like 9, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, but I've read the county ordinance back to front several times, and there really isn't anything we would want in ours that would be different than what the county already has, except that it's not enforced. And Kurt is perfectly willing to enforce uh, or the ordinance about uh, dogs that attack livestock and animals, and he's also willing to enforce the vicious dog ordinance, but there's a definite definition of what a vicious dog is. And, excuse me, but a dog that runs up your bicycle is not oh, no. part of the vicious dog <laughs> Unless definition. I broke my leg. Right. <laughs> well, even then, he might lick you when you fell down. <laughs> so, um, there's just a whole lot of points to the dog ordinance that are never going to get enforced. And if, if somebody sees somebody's dog, and they know whose dog it is, going on their yard, they need to take some initiative themselves and get out there and do something about it, not call the sheriff. The only other thing I wanted to say, and that was a, a suggestion about water problems, and that is there's a whole lot of people besides Dave and Eldon who have water issues here in this town. People have had several connections, several houses, on one connection for years. It's a, a kettle of fish no one wanted to open. But... But Diane, they did. They tried to address that years ago. Well, yes, but because, it still exists. But, no, they have been charging those, those that household that has two meters, instead of putting, making them put two meters in, they've been charging them for months. Okay, but, but the solution, the solution this, that I su I'm going to suggest is that you give a four or five month amnesty to people to correct their problems when they know they have it. And then after that, yeah, let the chips fall where they are. I mean, if you want to go after them, then that's fine. But people, especially people who know that they have a problem, might be able to fix it if you gave them a few months to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else want to enlighten us? Okay, let's make a motion to... Anything else? Board? Oh, I forgot. Where is it? What does it say? Oh, the citizen input. Basically, what we're trying to do in our policies and procedures with the citizen input section of the... Agenda is, you know, to, I mean, if we don't have to make a decision on any certain act or anything like that, we're going to put those type of things into the citizen input area. You know, just kind of keep it clean so we can just move on. I mean, be, you know, you understand? Yes. Kind of what, you, know, you would have been able to say that if you had been in like that. So, and we want to keep that open, you know, and that's pretty much, you know, uh, we don't really have to offer the citizen input, but we are just so that you know, we can hear, you know, because we don't get together that often. But that's kind of. We hope they will come and see if they have yeah, concerns. Yeah, we, I enjoy hearing what questions or whatever. Well, come and get things straightened out.